Hi, this is going to be the video on um, users and security. So if we look at that assignment, you'll see that what we want to do, let me enhance it a little bit, is create a, a description of the users and how they'll use the database, create a role with privileges for the general user, and create a login for the role and test it. And you can follow the video, which is what I'm creating right now. And to turn in, you want a description of the users and how they would use the database and SQL for the general user role and privileges. So I'm going to go to modules. One of the things that I have created already is a page. And this talks about um, identifying the users. You know, these are the people who would use the database and how they would use it. Uh, we've got general users, members, and administrators, according to our description. All right. We also need to add a uh, comments table to the database. I forgot to have that in the first time. It's actually a couple of other things I forgot, but for right now, we'll just let this be it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go to... Um, PG admin, the climate change DBA. Um, I'm going to kill this table and I'm going to add that table. So this is for the wrong database. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to add a query tool and um, from the uh, page here I will copy paste this so we go back and I will run that and that will add that table to our to our database so let's go back all right so when we talk about privileges there are basic uh, different privileges, but they're usually about things that you can do in the database. So like you can select things, that is the ability to read. You can insert, that's the ability to add new data. You can update, which is the ability to change existing data. And delete, which is the ability to remove existing data. In addition, there are some other privileges, which as I said, we'll ignore for now, but they're important. Execute, which allows you to run stored procedures and functions. Create, which gives you the ability to create database objects, alter the ability to change database objects, and drop the ability to remove database objects. Those are the main database permissions. There are also server permissions, but we'll not worry about those. One useful way of determining uh, privileges is to create a grid and uh, set up which priv permissions, which privileges each, each user has on the different tables. So basically the general users can select everything, but they cannot um, do anything else. They can just look at it. I might, something to consider is we might add insert to person so that they could join and become a member. In the member, They've mostly got select permissions, all the same select permissions. They've also got um, uh, update permissions on, uh, so they can update their information on the, uh, you know, the member table. Uh, they've also, for their own comments, they can select them, they can insert them, they can update them, and I hesitated on this, but I let them also delete them. For the administrator, basically has all the permissions on the tables. I wouldn't give them the permissions to do things like uh, alter and drop. Probably not create either, but I would give them permissions on all the tables. So uh, this is a little note that this isn't the whole story. Uh, permissions don't tell the whole story. Um, you know, basically, like, how could you keep a member from updating somebody else's record? The answer can be to, through a stored procedure.
which is an SQL script that can take parameters and that you give permission to with the execute uh, privilege. The script can limit the user to his or her own records and it's also useful to provide each user with a, their own view of the data. And uh, there's a database object called a view that can do this that. A view is essentially a stored query. It's possible to use them to obscure the underlying database. These groups can be, uh, these views and functions and things can be grouped together in separate schema. And schemas are a collection of related objects such as tables, views, procedures. It is possible to give a user a privilege, uh, basically only the privileges that are confined to a specific schema. A role is how you um, get post, uh, how it manages privileges. And first we're going to create an administrator role. And the administrator is going to have all privileges on the schema public. That means it'll have insert, update, um, delete, and execute. So I'm going to run these. I'm just going to copy. I'm going to go to PG admin, and I'm going to run them. OK, so you want to select, and I didn't get the, so you want to select these uh, and then run them. OK, so a couple of things. When we go down to um, logins and roles, and if I open that up, you'll now see that there is an admin role. So all the roles are listed down here. OK, now I'm going to create a user. Normally, these users would also be in the database. Whoops. Um, that can use the role. Did I do that? I didn't do that. That's not in here. I'm going to have to adjust this. Uh, what we want is something more like this, where we create a role with a password, um, with a login, and then we assign the member role to uh, uh, Meredith. Somehow this got copied, and it doesn't have that. I was going to assign the create a role with login and uh, assign it there. So what we want is something like this. Before you do the assignment, it will be changed, and it will be there. All right. So what we'll do is we'll punt on that for right now, and we will create a member role. A couple of things. This creates the member role. This creates uh, selecting all the sequences, because you have to get permissions on the sequences. That's the auto numbering bit. So, And I'm giving them pa uh, select and update on all of them. And then I'm granting select on all of the tables in the uh, member role. For a couple of them, for mainly for a person, I did select, insert, and update. Okay, and I did the same for comments. I didn't actually add delete there, but you could have. So this is the role, and these are all the privileges that go with the role. It's not a login role, right? This is what they call a group role. We will add people to the group. So I am going to copy this, go to PG Admin. I'm going to paste, and I'm going to run it from the top. I'm going to run this all the way down to here. OK, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to refresh the roles. And when we go down there, we'll see that there is a member role. And if I look at its properties, um, there's the definition, the privileges, inherit rights from the member, membership, parameter, security. doesn't tell you a lot about it, but it is there. Okay, so we want to add somebody to this role. So we're going to create a member, a Meredith. Um, and we are going to give them a password, which is password, and they do have a login. And I'm going to grant the member role. So come back here. We add these two lines. 
and I'm going to run those. I'm going to refresh the roles again and we go to member role. See, notice there's a Meredith role. Go to member role. One of the things I want to do is we'll look at the properties. And if we look at membership, uh, let's cancel. Let's look at Meredith role properties. And if we look at membership, she's a member of member role. All right. So I'm going to close this. All right. Now, one of the things that I am going to do, since I've added these roles, is I want to test this role, the member role. So I'm just going to test the member role. Um, so I'm going to go to climate change DB. Actually, up above this, I'm going to go to my Postgres SQL 12. I am going to disconnect the server. This isn't the only way to do this, but it's probably the easiest. I'm going to go to the properties. I'm going to go to the connection. And I'm going to change the username to A. Meredith. And I sure hope I spelled that right. OK, it looks like it. And then the pass. OK, so we do that and we save. And then I want to connect the server. And I'm going to connect it. Notice that it says that the role is a Meredith. And I'm going to do p at ssw0rd1. And we do OK. We are connected. And notice that we are, um, so if I do a uh, climate change DB and I do a uh, new query tool, which you do have to do a new query tool, notice that it has a Meredith at Postgres SQL 12. So if I s want to insert into person, and I'm going to insert first name, last name, date added, and for the values, I will just do uh, Joe Jones current date. It should allow me to do this. It did. And I should be able to select from it. So I'm going to select uh, everything from person. Again, we've only got the one record in it at this point. All right. And I should be able to update it. Uh, let's make it Joseph. So I'm going to say update person uh, set first name equals um, Joseph. Where person key equals one. Okay, so that should allow that to happen too. All right, I don't have delete permissions, so if I try to delete it, it shouldn't work. Let's try to um, update uh, event. And I'm going to say uh, set event name equals uh, climate summit. So first of all, there's nothing to update. So that would give an error for that. But before we even get that error, we will get permission denied. Because we don't have permissions to update on that. We also don't have permissions to insert into event. Insert into event. All right, so one of the things I need to do is look at the table event. Um, so 
we would have I'm just going to do event name uh, values climate summit and again what we'll get is that we don't have permissions to do that see permission denied so the the uh, role that we made is working um, to go back to where we were I go up here I uh, disconnect the server I right click I go to properties connection I'm going to change it back to Postgres I'm going to save that I am going to uh, connect server I need to do my Postgres password which is the same actually PSW0RD1 and I'm reconnected and this time I'm connected under um, the Postgres which is the admin. Now notice this window here is still uh, a Meredith and it it is connected that way um, whereas uh, this one is under Postgres you have to be careful of that. Different windows are connected under different roles. And uh, you have, as I said, you can, it can get confusing. All right. I think that is it for this video. The assignment, before I guess, before I go, uh, is mostly... So let's go back to the assignment. I'll go through the assignments, but it's in the modules too. Is mostly to do this same process with the general user, right? So create a role for the general user, create a login for that role, and test it. And then just turn in the SQL for that. Uh, the other stuff you could kind of copy and paste if you want, or just uh, if, if I get just the SQL, I'll be happy. All right, so I'm going to end the video.